Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. One day after a crazy day in the Champions League, I'm sporting my Tottenham Hotspur jersey. My boys made it through. What an incredible, incredible season of Champions League football um, this year. Regardless of who you root for, um, it's just been incredible games to watch with the crazy comebacks and all types of stuff like that. But as you saw from today's video, I wanna talk about more team of the season related things. Even though Champions League is the stuff that we're getting this week in FIFA Ultimate Team, I wanna keep preparing you guys for team of the season that is upcoming. And this is a video that a lot of people have been requesting and it basically kind of goes along the time frame of when do I want to look to buy my team of the season players that I want to have in my team. Now, obviously, we don't know the exact team of the season that's going to be coming out. We don't know who's included in that exact team of the season squad, but we have a pretty good guess. You know, we have a pretty good guess about a few guys that are going to, going to get in there, you know, like a Hyunmin Sun, um, some guys like... Um, a we're gonna have that 96 VVD card is gonna be included in there. Um, you know, if we move on, move on to other leagues, we're gonna have an Mbappe team of the season. You're probably gonna have a Modric team of the season. You're probably going to have, um, you know, a Neymar team of the season, a Messi team of the season, a Ronaldo team of the season, and even some of the lower rated guys. Uh, maybe even like Jamie Vardy getting a team of the season. Uh, Marcus Marcus Rashford or. Um, other people that have been having pretty phenomenal years, Mohamed Salah as well. Um, a lot of people kind of know who they want to go for during this team of the season time frame. I just want to kind of help you guys understand what I'm looking at in terms of when is the best time to buy those players. And I'm looking at team of the years right now because I think the pattern this year is going to follow a similar trend to the team of the year cards. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. But I want to take a look la back at last year. We're gonna look at a few cards and we're gonna look at what happened to those cards. Now, obviously we have to keep in mind that last year we had a World Cup mode that came out right after and honestly during team of the season, the crash and the fall off. You see this major, major fall off here was really part of the World Cup mode that happened at the end of May. And that's why team of the season was earlier last year. We've been talking about that, but that's, that's why I'm choosing in my examples today. I've got a lot of players that are from the first two team of the seasons. Um, they released last year, they released the Premier League first for the main leagues and then La Liga second um, because those were the first two. That's why I'm looking at those because those really gave us the best look at how team of the season prices did out of packs. Um, and basically what I see with these graphs is basically the similar trend that we see is this year. A lot of them were their cheapest on Sunday or Thursday, which is this, the case here with Fernandinho. Yes, the price is very high. You're thinking a team of the season Fernandinho card in the midfield, 531K, that seems a bit pricey. They're gonna hold their prices a lot better this year than they did last year because they're not gonna have this huge drop off where it drops down to 200,000 coins. Uh, because of the World Cup mode being out in the game. Um, but what I, wanna, what I think is going to happen this year is, and we'll kind of look through, through more of these examples, is for the more meta cards and for the cards that are in more rare positions where there aren't a ton of other competitors, like in right back now, we have a Surge Aurier card that's going to get upgraded. Thanks to my boys team winning today. And also we're going to have a Trent Alexander-Arnold FFS card, maybe an Alexander-Arnold team of the season card. So there's more competition at right back than there was last year in the Prem. So this card might not be as meta and, you know, it, it's not like the only version of a team of the season card for this position for this league in the Premier League, the most popular league. But you see here that Walker reached his lowest on Thursday and rose in the next week to 560. So we went from 500 to 560. That's kind of be like the time frame with a lot of these cards. They're going to be inflated and maybe even rise up in price for a week, maybe two weeks after they go out of packs. But then they're going to start trickling down because there's going to be more team of the season. There's uh, cards coming out. There's going to be more SBCs, more coin sinking SBCs and other opportunities to spend your coins on the game. And you, you are going to see these cards trickle off in value. Ericsson is a good example here. He went out of packs at 500,000 coins and just continued to kind of trickle down slowly until the panic began. But this is how I envision a lot of the cards that like Ericsson already had a ton of special cards. So he was a card that people had used all year. And now obviously a lot of the team of the year cards are already gonna have special cards. You know, if we look at some of the other cards in ultimate team, 
um, that are popular, that even like Erickson this year, he is a very strong candidate for team of the season, but he's just not a meta meta player. Um, and it's not like you're going to use a team of the season Erickson card that you haven't used yet before already this year. He's had plenty of informs and plenty of other high rated cards that you have an opportunity to use him. And he's not known as a super duper meta player um, in this game. So that's why you kind of see his price just kind of trickle off like this. Whereas we saw Kyle Walker hit a low point and then rise out of packs. Even the same thing with Fernandinho kind of hitting a low point at 530 rising up to 550, 570 um, in the short term. But you're not really looking to quick flip with a lot of these cards. You're just looking to get the best buy time and the buy price for a lot of these team of the season cards. And again, this year, I think it's going to be either in that first weekend or on Thursday after rewards. And I really think they're going to follow the trend of the team of the year cards this year as well. So I want to look at actually team of the year Kevin De Bruyne. I think he's a good example. In packs, he left packs at 2.3 million coins in the next week. The next couple days, he rose back up to 2.5. Now, yes, we had the Future Stars promotion that dropped these cards' prices a lot. Um, but I think this is exactly how it's going to look for these Team of the Season graphs. You're going to have them hit their lowest point while they're in packs. They're going to rebound during the week after that when they're out of packs. As there are people who are still using those cards... Uh, and the hype is still there for those new team of the season cards. And then they're going to kind of trickle back down in price and maintain a value that is not too much terribly lower. You know, 2.3 million to 2 million, 2.1 seems like a big drop, but not really for a card like this. So let's say Fernandinho gets a team of the season this year. Let's say his card is around 500,000 coins. Let's say he goes to 550 out of packs in the first week. I would ex expect him in the second week to stay like somewhere around the 470, 480 range. So if you buy him at 500, you can sell them at 550, or if you want to just keep using them out for the rest of the game, you might eventually take a 20, 30, 40k loss on him. I don't think that's too terrible. Um, compared to what happened last year and all the panic that we had there, that's not going to happen this year because these cards are going to maintain their value a lot longer because we don't have a World Cup mode that is going on uh, at the same time. Now, obviously, Sergio Ramos here, I have bet that his price would have rebounded more, even though he had a team of the season card which are the team of the year card, which was a lot better in FIFA 18 than his team of the season card. He didn't have any time to rise out of packs. He went out of packs right here on this Friday and then boom, we learned about World Cup mode and his price just starts tanking downwards. So for a card like this, I would expect that this to rise up to around 700, 720, 730 thousand coins after this, maybe even higher because his team of the season card was a lot more expensive at that point um, than, the, than the TOTS card. Um, and so I would have expected his card to continue to rise up in the hype, but it didn't have the time to because of the panic sell. Even for a guy like Ronaldo, hit his lowest point Monday, 3694, rose up to 3.9, and then kept dropping big time with Team of the Season on the horizon. So again, for cards like that this year, let's say a Team of the Season Mohamed Salah, if that's somebody that you want to get in your club, in your team, it's going to be a nutty card. You can, you can believe that for sure. Um, but... You're going to want to probably buy that card on the Thursday when that card um, is in packs and hits rewards or on the Sunday. Now, I want to talk through those two buying points here really quickly at the end. Um, Thursday, the buy point and why you would want to buy that card on Thursday is if they include, and I don't think they have announced this yet, but if they include the team of the season cards as weekly rewards, if they include those as weekly rewards in your red picks, um, I guess you would say, if they include that in there, then you would definitely have a major opportunity to see those cards dip on Thursday as people pack them in their rewards. And that's one thing that you really want to kind of keep your eyes out for and keep watching for is if you start to see if they tweet anything about the team of the season items going to be in the red player picks or even the team of the week packs if they make those a tots pack um, that would make thursdays definitely the day to buy then because that's more of those cards that people would be getting in their team in their club on tradable that they would no longer have to use a tradable version in their club they would go and sell the tradable version along with all the packs from foot champions and division rivals going to be opened you best believe there's going to be a lot of people that um 
are selling those cards at that point in time if that does happen. That's why I think Thursdays will be the low point. And again, I think it's going to kind of follow the same pattern as a lot of these team the season cards did. Um, like a Kevin De Bruyne, like some of the other, or excuse me, some of the team of the year card fluctuations, like a Conte, something like that. I think they're going to follow the same price. You see Conte was 2.1, rose up to 2.4 in the next week. Yes, he did drop down, but um, you're going to have this kind of same action within the next week. So if you want to buy, you can kind of almost fluctuate with this week per week. Let's say Premier League Tots comes out, you buy on Thursday, you rock with that Premier League team for the next week, you sell on next Thursday, you buy the next league, build a team with them. That's a good way to honestly make coins during team of the season and try a lot of players out as my controller just died. That's really nice. But that's going to be a good way to try players out during team of the season and to, you know, make it in a cost-effective manner. Um, you don't want to be trying players out and just losing, losing tons of coins. That's not what you want to be doing. Um, you want to be able to play with those players, sell them for a profit, and that just makes everybody happy. And the player, um, you know, trying out players just makes it so much more fun if you're able to do that. So again, kind of follow these team of the year graphs as kind of an example. I don't think the drop off drop off will be this big after they go up a week, but it will back, come back down, except for some of the more OP cards like a Kyle Walker, um, or maybe if we get some right wings other than Sterling, like a team of the season, Mares. I don't know, there's a lot of candidates for team of the season um, in that regard, but the more rare positions, maybe like a team of the season, Davidson Sanchez, if that would come out, um, that would be more of a card I think that would be more rare because you know if you look at BPL center backs, you have VVD who's obviously people are going to use, and then a Davinson Sanchez I think might be the next best person to put beside VVD. Just thinking theoretically here, um, again, but that's kind of your your game plan with buying these Tots cards to so try them out. Um, just watch their prices throughout the week, but I think Thursday on the rewards day with the reward supply and if they put them into Foot Champions red picks is going to be the day where you see these cards hit their lowest this year in packs and then look for them to rise the next week and then kind of fizzle out um, in value the weeks and so beyond that as more team and season cards and more cards and SBCs come onto the market. If you enjoyed this video, smash a thumbs up on it. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.